Have you ever noticed fruits and vegetables kept at room temperature for several days are often rotten and smell bad? Some chemical reactions take place inside them which spoils them. Hello everyone. We are here today to learn about chemical reactions and equations. In this lesson, we will focus on the basic concepts for a crystal clear understanding and also on important topics from exam perspective. So we will learn about chemical reactions and equations, how to balance a chemical equation and types of chemical reactions. Do you think it's really important to learn about chemical reactions? Yes, of course. Whenever you are ill, you take medicines and they work like magic and make you feel a lot better. That's because some chemical reactions take place inside your body which make you feel better. Trees prepare their food by the process of photosynthesis which again is a chemical reaction. We breathe in oxygen to oxidize the food that we eat to get energy. Oxidation of food is again a chemical reaction. Rusting of iron is a chemical reaction. Digestion of food is a chemical reaction. Burning of fuels in our vehicles is also a chemical reaction. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Watch the entire playlist of chemical reactions and equations to learn the concepts like never before. Chemical reactions, chemical equations. Are they same or they are different? A lot of us are often confused between the two. So watch this video to get a complete clarity on this. In all chemical reactions, be it rusting of iron or digestion of food, we see that the nature and identity of the initial substance has somewhat changed. We could either notice a change in state or we could notice a change in color or evolution of a gas or a change in temperature. So one of these changes are noticed during the course of a chemical reaction. So let us look at few examples. Let's talk about rusting of iron. So what happens in rusting of iron? We see that the color of the iron articles change from blackish, like generally iron is like blackish grayish color and it changes to reddish brown color. So what, what do we notice? We notice a change in color. So rusting of iron is an example where we notice a change in color as the chemical reaction takes place. Let's look at another example. Let's talk about digestion of food. Now the food that we eat, they are solid. Like a lot of food that we eat are solid. Let's say if we eat a burger, so the burger is solid. But what happens as the burger gets digested inside our body? So we chew the burger, break it down into smaller pieces, a lot of digestive enzymes act on the burger and that's how the digestion process takes place. And as these reactions take place inside the body, the burger which was earlier solid in state also changes to other states. For example, it change, changes to liquid state. Right. So digestion of food is one example where we see that there is a change in state as the chemical reaction takes place. Let's talk about burning of petrol or diesel in a vehicle. What happens? Now, as the fuel is burnt, we see that a lot of gases are emitted. In fact, you would have seen that as vehicles move from one place to another, that gases are emitted. So evolution of gas is clearly seen. Besides that, we also notice a change in temperature. Now, as the vehicle operates, you will see that the engine and the parts of the vehicle become hot. Why? Due to an increase in temperature. So as chemical reactions take place, there is also a change in temperature. So these two phenomena are illustrated by this example of a vehicle. So burning of petrol or diesel in a vehicle shows that there is evolution of gas or change in temperature during a chemical reaction. Whenever a chemical change occurs, we say that a chemical reaction has taken place. Look at this example. Magnesium plus oxygen gives magnesium oxide. So what do we see here? Two different elements, magnesium and oxygen, they combine together to form a new thing which is magnesium oxide. So that's a chemical reaction. Now all those substances that undergo the chemical change, they are called reactants. So in this case, magnesium and oxygen 
they are undergoing the change as in magnesium was earlier magnesium and now it became magnesium oxide so it underwent a change similarly oxygen was earlier oxygen and now it became mag magnesium oxide so it underwent a change so they are reactants and the new product which is formed is called the product so the, basically the new substance which is formed or the output of this chemical reaction is the product why do we even need a chemical equation shorter names easier to write and super easy to balance the equation. So this equation tells us why uh, writing chemical equation is required or it is beneficial. So instead of writing magnesium plus oxygen gives magnesium oxide, we have simply used their symbol, their symbols and this made it like short, easy to write and also balancing became easy. Now, why do we need to balance a chemical equation? That is something we'll discuss a little later. But for now, all you need to understand is why is chemical equation preferred or why do we even talk about chemical equation? Now, this uh, equation was anyways a short equation. Now, if we talk about slightly more complicated equations like this, where carbon monoxide combines with hydrogen to form CH3OH. So in this case, you see it is not just the symbols of the elements that is mentioned. It also the equation also talks about the state of each of the reactant and the product and also under what circumstances this situation, this reaction is taking place. So we see that it's like a compact version which gives us all the necessary information but in short in fact sometimes more complicated equations like this this is a very popular equation of a process called photosynthesis the process by which green plants prepare their own food in presence of sunlight using chlorophyll so even in this case we see that the reactants and the products are clearly mentioned with states that carbon dioxide combines with water in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll to form C6H12O6 which is glucose and oxygen is liberated during the process and it also tells the states of each of these reactants and products. Right? So we see that looking at all of these examples of chemical equation, we really understand the need of chemical equation, even though we already had the concept of chemical reaction. So equations made it more convenient to write, easy to remember and balancing was super easy. Now, as I was mentioning, states of chemicals. Now, that is very, very important. We must know what is the state of a particular reactant or a product. Now, even before we get into the different states and their abbreviations, let's understand why mentioning the state is important. Let's say we talk about, say, sugar. So let's say we talk about a reaction that takes place with sugar. I mean, the sugar crystals. Let's say we talk about another reaction that takes place with su sugar solution, as in sugar dissolved in water. Now, a sugar solution and uh, the su sugar crystals, are they exactly the same thing? Not really. I mean, the way they might react with other substances might not be the same. And that is why it is important to mention the state of a particular chemical. So whenever we are talking about an aqueous solution, as in a substance dissolved in water, the term aqua has been derived from water and that's why it is called aqueous and is abbreviated as AQ. So whenever we're talking about any aqua solution, we mention AQ. If we are talking about a liquid, we mention L. If we are talking about a solid, which is like insoluble or a precipitate. So precipitate is the residue that is left behind. And if we are talking about a gas, it has to be G. So these are the abbreviations that we use to uh, indicate whether a reactant or a product is solid, liquid, gas or aqueous. In the next video, we will learn about how to balance a chemical equation and why at all balancing is so important. So stay tuned.